we're good. Alrighty, and we're good. We are live. We're live. live. Welcome, everybody, to episode 140 of Live at the Hive Digital Marketing from the Trenches. I'm your host, Dan Adelko. Producer Matt. Chad Gillen. Nicely done, Chad. <laughs> right on the ball. Bam. Got my name right. That's it. You <laughs> at least you can hear us this time. We were having a little bit of technical difficulties before the live, but... Uh, <laughs> Making yeah, Chad it's... sweat a little bit with his audio, but <laughs> yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Eh? I think we're yeah. so we're so used to it having to deal with the technical things. It's sun. I don't even sweat anymore. Yeah, I know. You know. And hey, we were even ahead of schedule too. We were like, we're like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. figured it out. It only it's took 140 way. episodes, so yep. that's like three years, basically. <laughs> but we got there. Um, once again, welcome everybody. I'm Dan Adelko. Today's live, we've got a couple of new segments that we're going to introduce. But in this episode of Live at the Hive, we're going to be talking about copywriting and the importance of copywriting. And what is our official title? It's, it's kind of punchy. Recipes for writing copy that captivates and converts the awesome sauce. Mm -hmm. So we have been over the years, we've always covered what's new in the world of, of digital marketing. And now we also want to talk a little bit about what's awesome in the world of digital marketing. As you probably know, there's SEO Twitter and digital marketing Twitter, lots of really great influential experienced people and even brands um, and companies are sharing just a ton of info. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. If you, you know, keep up and, and, follow that i think it's it's really worth your while so yeah. what we've done is we've picked out a few uh things that i ran into during the week and we just wanted to feature and highlight some of these influencers that you may not know about they're giving away great stuff so our first one is from joe hall he's a he's a very well respected seo smart guy yeah. um joe's given away a free wordpress code snippet uh every friday on his free code friday series um nice. Yeah, so you know, really helpful, useful um, things. He also is answering questions when people ask him, you know, about how the code works or, or different things. So, so really, really super useful there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up, we've got um, Kevin Indig. Uh, you may or may not have heard of Kevin Indig. It's uh, he is a definitely an influencer in the SEO world. Uh, he's, I believe, the VP of SEO at G Two Crowd. Mm -hmm. So very big site. He has a podcast, an awesome podcast called TechBound. Um, definitely, definitely recommend that if you're in this space that you follow up with the TechBound, um, the, the TechBound podcast. Um, and this week, he's got a really great one featuring Sam O, oh, dropping tons of knowledge bombs um, and talking a lot about how to grow um, Hrefs, Ahrefs, learning by observation, link automation, and YouTube SEO, which is a completely different animal altogether. So yeah. definitely um, put that on your weekend listening list. Um, sure. Typically what I do, since I'm a bit of an insomniac, I, I'll put my podcasts on my headphones and, and you know, as long as I can drift in and drift out, hopefully some of it goes through a yeah. osmosis subliminal. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right. Next up, we've got um, Google Analytics has a really great Twitter account. And, you know, the irony is, is everybody goes to Twitter to see updates when mm -hmm. other platforms go down. But um, Google Analytics has been featuring for a little while. And I think this is really great because of the influence and the size of, of Google Analytics. Um, they're featuring other bloggers and, and influencers content on their content. And there was a fantastic article here um, from analytics mania which if you're in the web analytics or you want to learn more about web analytics check out analytics mania uh they've got he's a great article there on how to reduce direct traffic in google analytics and some of the myths that people have about what direct traffic means um definitely take the time to to jump into mm -hmm. that um lastly and this is not we're not covering marketing drama it's not marketing drama alert quite yet <laughs> <laughs> um, but Rand Fishkin made a great point on Twitter with examples of how Google rich results are undermining the hard work of salary aggregators like Payscale uh, and comparison websites where those rich mm -hmm. have actually seriously um, affected the traffic that goes to those sites. Makes a lot, there's a lot of good debate in there uh, in that Twitter thread. Mm -hmm. um, and just as a as a as a point, if you're new to Twitter, you're, you you don't maybe necessarily use it. There's a great uh, app there. It's a bot called Thread Reader app, 
um, and you can ask thread reader app to unroll any specific thread you comment on and it will create an archive for you with a direct link so you can always you know if you see a great thread you can get thread reader app to um unroll that for you and then you can mm -hmm. share it with uh, your team or your colleagues or whoever else so that's just a, a little awesome. tip and lastly is um youtuber and all-around nice guy that denver guy um <laughs> if you're not into fortnite you won't know who he is but he is uh a really good youtuber and he launched a course on on becoming a youtube legend how to basically set up a youtube channel how to optimize it everything that goes into being a successful YouTuber. I bought this the other day mm -hmm. uh, and I, I typically will buy stuff like this, but I, I gotta say it's a great series of courses. It's got a lot of, you know, and he's got a million, I think 1.1 million on one of his channels. Um, so he's coming from a place of, of real knowledge and he, he built that himself over a period of five years. Yep. Uh, so if you're on YouTube looking to learn more about how YouTube works, it's worth the 97 bucks to go and buy it from him because you're going to save yourself so much time and so much trouble. <laughs> I love his landing page. Even his mom has a little, uh, a see <laughs> testimonial he here. <laughs> yeah. He, he's definitely, he's definitely, um, he's, uh, his tagline is your second favorite PE teacher. So he, he taught kids, uh, grade four, oh, yeah. uh, physical <laughs> education. So, Nice. Um, yeah, cool. he's he's got a really good channel. If you're into Fortnite, if you're not into Fortnite, it doesn't matter. But it's well worth watching. And like he talks about everything in there, mm -hmm. and it also comes with a really great uh, private Discord channel where you can actually talk to other people that are developing YouTube channels. So whether you're doing it for business or whether you're doing it to try to build up a YouTube channel yourself or for your mm -hmm. brand, um, mm -hmm. like I said, ninety-seven dollars is going to save you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of pain and figuring things out on the YouTube yeah, platform. For sure. Yeah. And before we kind of go into uh, what's working for today, I think that's a really good strategy for a lot of people too. Um, mm -hmm. If you're if, if you're putting something in front of people that you'd like for them to purchase, sign up for, or anything like that, having a hub where people can communicate with one another about the course material and maybe network with one another and kind of create a mini kind of micro community around that, mm -hmm. it's a really good strategy. So whether you're within uh, the YouTube uh, content creation atmosphere, uh, Twitch, gaming, um, or anything like that, Discord, uh, Google Hangouts, even Slack, if you have a Slack channel, anything really, even a Facebook group. Uh, it, it's a really good strategy to keep people engaged even after they're done um, consuming your content. Absolutely, 100%. All right, well, there we go. That's what's awesome in marketing this week. I'm your host, <laughs> right I'm Franco. I love your face. <laughs> Yeah, so dude, good. I shouldn't, I shouldn't just rip him off blatantly. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of an homage, we will say. Yes, yes. Be. Cool. Um, so this so, week, yes, we're going to be talking about uh, recipes for writing copy. And it's just not regular <laughs> copy. I mean, this is copy that's going to be captivating the audience, converting people. Um, and it's a little bit more... Um, not so dry or fluffy, right? Uh, it's getting straight to the point, but still kind of bringing people in. Um, so we have a number of great articles uh, to feature this week, um, as well as uh, some examples uh, from the lot, uh, from the hive and some examples that we found out in the wild um, to kind of showcase you guys. And yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So Chad, why don't you maybe uh, just give our massive audience a little bit of a, a quick rundown on on what you do every day at the hive and, and what are some of the things that you specialize in i know copywriting is a big deal for you yeah yeah I, well i've been writing for quite a few years just uh for creatively personally but yeah as my job i i do mostly copywriting uh just writing posts for blogs uh, and things of that like that um yeah Cool. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just let Chad head. Hey, copywriting, like that's that's pretty much everything right now, right? So, I mean, I uh, write. Speaking you're that's an entirely different thing. <laughs> but I mean, you're a workhorse, so you you love writing the copy. And I know whenever I send stuff your way, it's always coming out great. So, uh, awesome. so yeah, yeah. I, I think you'll have some good tips for everyone uh, this week for sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah there's like a lot of little tips when yeah, when it comes down to writing. I don't know, people get. <laughs> pretty sidetracking a little bit lost sometimes when they're when they're approaching content yeah. writing and yeah so it's yeah it's really handy to have some i missed some a, extra I, tips 
for sure. I missed a great tweet that we should have put in in the marketing awesome. Oh, yeah. It was um, I can't remember who it was now because it's Twitter. It was um, there are three ways that you can that 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 copywriting can go. You can learn to do it yourself. You can hire someone to do it, or you can fail miserably. Because <laughs> if you don't do either one or two, you're going to fail miserably. Yeah, pretty much. You know the in, the, the important. <laughs> hey, Courtney. Hey, April. Sashita, Stacy, Matei. Hey, guys. Everybody, Courtney, you're late. <laughs> 423 Courtney where's the 415 come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon Party. me all right I'll try so, to talk too much. so the importance of copywriting what one of the the funny things is over the years um, just the importance and how hard it is uh, one of the things I always say to people is the hardest thing in the world if you're a writer right when you come from a journalism background or anything, every marketer needs to be a writer. That's first. The hardest thing in the world to do is to write a Google ad, mm -hmm. a Google search ad. Yep. Good luck. It's it is very it, it's a skill. It's a, it's it's something that takes a lot of practice to do. And I think the same thing goes really for anything. I think, you know, we're going to talk a lot about the importance of headlines, how they can make or break any kind of campaign or a blog post different strategies you can use for positive and negative sentiment avoiding neutral sentiments mm -hmm. but i think the i think the important thing to highlight here is really the importance of focusing and giving proper attention to these what seem like small details mm -hmm. right even call to action copy um we'll talk about that on landing pages as well but through the whole life cycle of your customer's journey for your business whatever it is that you're doing writing copywriting should not be dismissed as something to be trivialized right sure. it's got to be a major focus yep absolutely a single word can change everything <laughs> oh that's that, right that's for sure yeah there we absolutely go. cool so I, I think we'll lead in with our first article here and i know uh chad i believe you were the one who dropped this guy in here yep um so this is a zuma and how to write perfect uh, ppc headlines and uh five five easy, easy steps Ugh, sorry Anyways, <laughs> oh, just one one note about AdZuma. If you, it's 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 a great platform. It, it helps speed things up. Mm -hmm. They just recently went to a free model completely. Okay. So if you're looking for something, they did a they did the coronavirus. I think you know four months free or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but they just announced because they have a marketplace, and I, I'm going to assume they're receiving some kind of a commission from companies yeah. that kind of thing. But the platform itself is now 100% free. So even if you're a really small business, you can go to AdZuma and it will help you streamline your digital campaigns on Google or on Facebook primarily, nice. right? So yep. just a, another free tool. If you're out on the hunt, um, you should definitely consider checking it out and trying it. For sure. Okay. Alrighty, so uh, within this article, they're going in through, uh, just like Dan said, it's really difficult to add, uh, to write kind of headlines and uh, add copy a lot of the times just because of the constraints uh, uh, and you still want to get your message across, right? So this article kind of goes through the five easy steps of how you can start kind of killing uh, the PPC copy, uh, as they say in the article. So uh, the first step is kind of choosing your keywords, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and so the, you can't, understate the importance of understanding the keywords that that, that you're going to be researching and i just wanted to make a point because we we actually came up a few times this week um when people say well we're writing content for a search engine a search engine is not a thing it's a conduit to another human being that human being is sitting in front of their mobile device or their computer or their laptop and they're trying to solve a problem. They're trying to figure something out. They're trying to discover something. They're trying to, you know, whatever it might be, whatever their motivation and intent is. Mm. So when you're creating your copy for search engines, which is, a, I kind of hate that terminology because it feels like you're, you're not writing for Google, right? Mm -hmm. You're writing for a human being, mm -hmm. which puts it solely in the realm of psychology and behavioral psychology, right? Like, can I get to their motivations, their fears, their pain points, right? And this is the type of stuff that you need to understand in your keyword research. So, mm -hmm. you know, especially the how-tos, um, 
question-based searches, those are the really phenomenally top risers in search engines these days, as even as things go more towards voice search or will, right? Yep. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that. Um, oh, hello, Elizabeth Toth. Elizabeth hey. Toth. I got the silly help button in front of my comments. It's driving <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Did you notice that in StreamYard? No, is it? Yeah. It's like a little help. I can, all I can see is uh, maybe I'll just look over here. <laughs> I always get really useful tools here. Well, we're glad you can feature, can you feature that comment. Yeah, I did. Perfect. All right. Yes. Um, well, we're glad. And that's that's one of the reasons, Elizabeth, that we started the, the, the marketing awesome uh, segment right out, off the top that you can catch on the replay if you missed it. We're, we're highlighting a lot of stuff we're finding on Twitter and different uh, resources and different things that, that, uh, you know, hopefully we're throwing some knowledge bombs around for sure. Cool. Um, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to deviate on how important mm -hmm. that, that keyword research and, and really thoughtfully approaching it as, as your customer, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So next up. Yeah. So next is going to be uh, thinking about your unique selling proposition, right? So mm -hmm. uh, going through really narrowing down what are people looking for? What makes you stand out from other businesses, right? Uh, so if you kind of look at these two examples here, um, it doesn't really tell you anything in option B, right? It's kind of fresh quality flowers sourced directly from Google growers, but this one really kind of narrows it down a lot. Deliver two, and there's a local listing, right? Nottingham, order by three o'clock, delivery by today, flowers are great. So right, so right off the bat, you can really see what's, what's the difference between these two ads and why ad variant A would outperform ad variant B, right? For sure, and I think we're gonna talk about sentiment at some point in here, but yeah. definitely using as the, the least number of characters as possible mm -hmm. um and then getting right to the point very quickly with that that benefit proposition for for your customer mm -hmm. right um one of the death knells in all copywriting is neutral sentiment mm -hmm. just making a flat statement um you know one of the things um that we like to talk about is contact us out of context of any reason for someone to contact you is kind of like me calling you up at like 10 o'clock at night and just asking you like what you're doing <laughs> right like what yeah. why do you want to contact us is it to get a consultation is it to you know act on something mm -hmm. uh, all of that mm -hmm. right so again neutral sentiment get rid of neutrality it's either positive sentiment mm -hmm. or negative sentiment and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what those two things mean um, as sure. we go on. It doesn't mean being negative, <laughs> straight For up. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, number three is gonna be focusing on the emotion. Uh, your message is gonna be conveying emotion towards people and which emotion you're trying to convey is gonna be um, very related to how your ad performs and uh, what kind of conversions people are um, performing uh, within your ad or uh, how long they're staying on your website, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. so, for example, um, they have one here. It's been injured in a crash, not your fault. Get help today, right? <coughs> um, we offer no win, no fee, uh, no fee legal help to you. Ask advice about your car accident, right? So really kind of dive in here and talking about the language of taking control of your claim and et cetera, right? For sure. And I think one of the points here is, so been injured in a crash, not your fault. Get help today. That's a good way of tapping into someone's emotion if they've just been in a car accident i think mm -hmm. the majority of people that are in the car accidents regardless <laughs> of the outcome say it's not my fault yeah yeah right exactly and it's a very emotional time especially right especially you're in a car you're flustered there's a billion motions running through your body right and mm -hmm. yeah it's not your fault and you want to get help and you want to make sure that uh you're taken care of right so for yeah sure. so you can see how one little one little statement unpacks a whole range of emotion for a user at a certain mm -hmm. point right mm -hmm. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, number four is going to be using simple language. I mean, I think a lot of the times when people are writing ad copy, especially if kind of 
Um, so you've blocked yourself out some time uh, to get a few uh, variants across and you're coming down uh, to the end of your session and it's kind of, people get kind of, I mean, you're trying to look for different uh, different words. It might be a little bit too wordy, a little bit too long, etc. So I think it's a, it's a good rule to just keep it simple. Don't use overly extravagant language. Try and make it so that, uh, you know, a, a grade five uh, student could read your ad and understand what it says, right? Yeah, and I think that that goes to, um, you know, in journalism, I believe the, you, the target is a grade three reading level. Yep. Um, yeah. And that, you know, you want to you want to keep that. Obviously, you know, there there are potentially exceptions, but certainly in your PPC advertising, when you're paying for it, you want to keep it uh, you keep it as simple as possible. Um, one yeah. little shout out here you can use is the. Um, ubiquitous Yoast SEO plugin for WordPress, mm -hmm. let me just see here, uh, will actually help you, um, it, it'll give you, a, a, I can't remember, is it the Fleischmann scale? I always get it wrong. <laughs> oh, for the readability? I asked myself as an expert and then I can't remember the name of the scale. Is it the readability scale? Yeah. Read? Is it, I scale. think it's the Norman right. Fox scale or something. Yeah. Um, it will Yoast uh, plugin will give you a readability analysis. Um, it's the f the, the flesh reading uh, yep. scale, is, yep. uh, right? So yep. I'm looking actually. Good job, Chad. I'm looking at your latest post for live at the hive and at the flesh reading <laughs> scale. Your copy score seventy point two in the test, uh, which makes it considered fairly easy to read. Good job. Excellent. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> Nicely done. A thousand words. There you go. Okay, cool. And then the last one is going to be including specific numbers and stats. If you can get people, um, give them exact numbers and a, maybe a price, a, a discount or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, it, it's going to add credibility to, to your ad, right? It's going to get people to build trust. They know what they're clicking on instead of some ambiguous like there's a flash sale or there's a like uh, come see what we have on sale type thing. Like, it's so ambiguous, right? right? So if you give specific stats, specific numbers, specific language. Uh, it's going to help people understand what they're clicking on. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, specificity always wins in, especially in any kind of writing uh, for the web. Um, generalities don't work well, but specificity will always work well, right? Mm -hmm. So be specific, use, back it up, uh, use meat and potatoes. Um, uh, you'll, see, you'll see really great results. Absolutely. That's yeah, one of my favorite points, really. It just yeah. makes it a lot harder to BS specifics. So, you know, you, it's just really easy to be, if you're generalizing and just being ambiguous, it muddles up your message and confuses people. It can mislead people. Mm -hmm. yeah. We see that in advertising a lot. So, yeah. I, yeah, I always and, like that, no, that rule of specifics. That's yeah. It. I think I think one of the things is you see that a lot because, again, like what we're talking about are all the various facets of the um i'm saying hi by the way in the chat to periscope <laughs> got a few people on there so it's pulling in <laughs> the comments here nice um just one of the things um is we're, we're going to talk about like we're now, now we're talking about ppc copywriting we're going to talk mm -hmm. about blog post copywriting we're going to talk mm -hmm. about headlines and landing pages um uh can we feature yvonne's got a great comment and so does stacy yeah. yeah for sure so Stacy says, uh, people scan when they read. So if you can bullet uh, specific points, people will want to dig a lot deeper. And it's true. Absolutely. And when you're writing emails, I think that's very important to mention. Mm -hmm. um, in emails, numbered lists and bulleted points are way better than long paragraphs if you can possibly swing it. Oh, absolutely. Yep. And then Yvonne, oh, yeah. uh, he says, uh, he, <laughs> I absolutely need specifics. When I don't have all the details, I get hesitant. Yeah, I think a lot of people do yeah. too, right? Yep. Absolutely. It's easy to get, it's easy to get muddled if you're, you know, if writing is a lot like exercising or playing the piano is you, you have to do it consistently. For sure. Right? Yep. yep. And then Courtney says specific ad copy will also pair nicely with more advanced keyword targeting beyond your basic brand and product terms. Got such a big brain, Courtney. Stop it. <laughs> Those are big brain strategies, Courtney. <laughs> big brain Digital marketing, right into the right technical stuff. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So, Alrighty. What was what's next up on? Uh, so we're gonna talk about. Yeah. So the next article uh, I was gonna bring up, uh, and I think it's really important because I I think um, 
I mean, if, if you're not writing a good headline, people aren't going to be clicking your content. Um, so the next one we're going to be talking about is kind of headline writing, right? So so how to write a headline that's going to grab people's attention. You're still conv- conveying information to them that they want to see, but also not clickbaiting them at the same time. Because if you're going to be clickbaiting people, you're, you're just going down the wrong path and nobody's going to be clicking your content anymore. Yeah, it's a very- so- 2012 strategy. <laughs> it was really popular in 2015. Was yeah. Really. yeah. Um, the infamous ones were Viral Nova, which is still around, but I think it took a very different form. It's, you know, clickbaiting headlines is when you are deceptively overstating or touting whatever it is. Everyone remembers, like, I watched this video and I can't believe what I saw at three minutes mm-hmm. and nine seconds. And <laughs> yeah. away. And, like, yeah. nothing really happens. Um mm-hmm. So yeah, you got to watch the clickbaitiness of headlines, yeah. um, for sure. Um, I think one of the processes with headlines that we try to do as much as we possibly can is always writing several, several iterations of it. Mm-hmm. Don't just write one headline and slam dunk it and kick it out, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think even this week's. Uh, how long did this week's title take to come up with? I know it went back. We bounced a whole bunch of stuff back and forth in Slack. I think it took us about, uh, well, we had a working session on Monday, and then I think we earned it out by Tuesday. But there was a couple ideas floating back and forth. So it's probably like uh, one or two days it took us to really iron out. Not full time, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, we were working on it 24, 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, we had a handful of uh, different options, though. And yeah. Totally. Just work um, them and modify them. I'm going to put a link here. Yeah, so what you want to do is, is really create and then and then machete things, right? Getting to the right, um, and we've got a lot of resources. I think there's there's a ton of content about this on, on the web about, you know, uh, headline formulas and trigger words and motivating words and things like that. I'm going to drop in what is a, <laughs> uh, I don't know how old it is. It's like 1999 called, and they want their website back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this yep. help thing is driving me ballistic. Oh, uh, yeah. It just sits right on top of the last comment. Maybe it's bugged. I think it might be bugged. Yeah. Um, let's see here. It's sentiment analyzer. Can someone throw that? I'll put it. It's in our private chat here. Okay. Yep. Bring Daniel's over right there. It's a great tool. It's a, it's really ugly, but it's very useful. Um, mm-hmm. It'll analyze the sentiment of a block of copy or even a headline, okay. so that you can be sure. So when we maybe we should should we touch on sentiment while we're talking about headlines? Yes, yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Right. So yeah, it's not the prettiest website in the world, that's for sure. But you know, wow. it, it does it does the trick. Um, very useful. So there's a few of them. Um, and what you want to do with headlines again, writing several multiple headlines. Going back into your content um, in your Google Analytics as well and looking at your blog content and and just checking to see where you saw performance improvements Mm -hmm. based on certain elements, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So sentiment is either positive or negative. So a negative sentiment would be that example of the PPC ad that said not not your fault, Mm -hmm. right? So that's a negative sentiment and negative sentiment can be um, without naming certain U.S. presidents, a powerful motivator for people, mm-hmm. right? Um, that is certainly one way to go. And actually, yeah. you know what? It is a bit of a fair comparison in a sense because in a lot of ways, what Donald Trump does is he leverages negative sentiment, right? Mm-hmm. Negative sentiment that he's deriving is, you know, immigration is dangerous, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into the politics of it. But if you looked at somebody quite the opposite, Barack Obama would be an example of someone writing with positive sentiment, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Both are equally effective, yep. right? And sometimes negative sentiment will be even more powerful. For sure. So that's, that's a little bit on the sentiment. And, and you do want to be somewhere in that scale on either side. You don't want to be sitting in, in, in zero land here, yeah. right? No. If no. your sentiment is zero, um, then, then you're not really saying anything. And I just won't connect with anyone. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Where are we now? Yes. Yeah, so I think uh, 
the article that we were going to be uh, discussing, I, I think we kind of dove into it a bit there, but just to kind of flash onto it before we move on to the next one, um, mm -hmm. this, the article basically talks about the four U's uh, that create uh, really attention-grabbing headlines, um, and that's your headline should be unique, really specific or ultra specific as they talk about here uh, your headline should convey a sense of urgency as well as your headline should be useful right um so it's using those four kind of uh, qualities and merging them together uh in a way that creates a a, a headline that people are going to want to click right for sure and uh really cool near to the bottom there mm -hmm. uh i don't know three quarters of the way down there's an example of them writing 12 alternate headlines yep, and then picking the winner from there. And this is the process that we also go through. And we strongly suggest that you go through this process as well. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, I think they go through right here, right? Practice right in a headline, right? So, yep. yeah, exactly. So this again, this is something I think that, you know, everybody in marketing should really be practicing this. Um, mm -hmm. it's all about communication and it's all about being direct and it's all about understanding the things that motivate your potential customers or your leads. Absolutely. For sure. Awesome. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, so, <laughs> so next up, um, so we kind of talked about headlines for a bit, so I won't go into the, we have another article for headlines, but, um, I think for the next one, let's talk about, uh, the nine steps to write your ultimate homepage headline, because I think a lot of the times homepages um can get uh yeah you know, I, I mean they're important they're the first thing that people see on your website if you're not converting your leads or your traffic onto a landing page uh the home page is a lot of times where you're going to want your um your attention grabbing headlines and things it's a it's a bit of a no-brainer but mm -hmm. um i think uh chad you put in this uh neil patel article here yes i get it yeah, so it's just he kind of goes through, uh, I think it's like four steps or five steps that he has here, or sorry, nine steps. Yes. So you want to break this one down for us, Chad? Yep, just pulling it up here. What do we got? Is this the nine steps? Oh, no, <laughs> you were going to do, sorry, let's let's do it. Let's do a little bit of a, sorry, we did throw you a boomerang there. You're doing the, you wanted to do the 57 timeless piece. That you ah, had. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shame on you. <laughs> this is, this is where you say, this is where you ask someone if they've, they've ever watched the TV show Band of Brothers. Oh, yeah. You got to right. rent it. Yeah. You just throw them under the bus. Oh, that's a huge, uh, <laughs> that's a binge watching weekend, Band of Brothers, <laughs> man. All righty. All, All right. Throw me under the bus. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this is this is just a, a really good uh, resource piece. Really, um, there's a lot of a lot of content in here, and a lot of pretty neat insights. Some of it's like a hundred years old; it, it goes way back. But a lot of it is is pretty timeless. Um, like some of my favorite numbers on here. Let's take a look. There's a couple in the middle that I really liked. Mm -hmm. uh, where's that? Find the inherent drama in your product. I I like that idea. It's like a lot of people get caught up in trying to talk about the specifics of their products and their features and all the details. And that's just, that's generally boring to read. Like that's something, if you want to have that in the spec section, you know, that's, that's where people go to learn about that. But when you want to captivate somebody or kind of pull them into your product and get them interested, like look at your product and find that drama in it. Basically yep. by that, I mean like find the story, like every, every product can tell a story somehow there's a story there somewhere. So you'd have to like really look at your product and really think about it. And find where the story is and then kind of approach approach it like that one i think that, oh, yeah number 15 that was that one leo burnett uh, had yep. said that back in the so you know that's back in the day yeah yeah, yeah 1891 yeah some of this stuff is like some of it's very timeless right mm -hmm. um the one of the important things and i think another really good analogy about that uh finding the inherent drama in your product um we talked about this before but apple's iPod introduction was at a time when it was, <coughs> pardon me, it was at a time when it was a 32 gigabyte flash drive SSD, blah, 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 right? And people didn't know what that meant. Like the vast majority of people that weren't technically um, savvy didn't know what that meant. It didn't mean anything because there were certainly music players around before the iPod. Mm -hmm. But when the iPod came out, it was the, the, the playlist of your life and a thousand songs in your pocket. Mm-hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. So just a just a point there. That's that's a, a I think it's a nice lever to to back up that statement. Yeah, for sure. Another one I really liked was uh, number 20. I think this is where a lot of people tend to falter to uh, write to one person, not a million. So it's like you, you have this idea when you're writing, if you're picturing this huge crowd of people that you're trying to talk to, you're not really, you don't have a, a human being in your brain at all. You're just, you just have like this idea of a crowd. So you, it's, you're not, it's hard to communicate that way. So yeah. it's, I just find it a lot easier. Like when I'm writing, I, I literally think of the person that is reading it. I'll, I'll write it, and then I, when I go back and read it over out loud, I'm reading it back as if I'm a completely different person and trying to mm -hmm. see how any random person might might perceive that and how they might take it. Um, so I, I just I don't know. I just find it's a lot easier to be able to connect with people mm -hmm. and have a real conversation if you're writing to one specific person. Like it doesn't have to be a specific person, but just have that idea in mind of that you're you're talking to somebody, you're talking to one person, you're not talking to a million faceless people that are not even real. Yeah, um, it's or, a great, whatever. It's a great, that's a great point. The other one tip that I really like to do, and sometimes I know that like when we're in the office, but my family thinks I'm losing it sometimes, is reading it out loud. Mm -hmm. Reading yeah. back your copy out loud is a really fantastic way to see if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, you can have sure. this amazing sentence and then you read it out loud and you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> You know, um, yeah, I know you, you, uh, there's this programming, uh, it's like a strategy that programmers use, but explain it to the rubber ducky, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of times what programmers will do is if they're trying to, um, understand, uh, their code or try to explain their code to someone, they'll be explaining it to the, maybe a rubber ducky that they have on their desk or something like that. Right. Just to yeah. kind of make sure uh, it makes sense. I think you actually told me that story before this is probably one of it's the good. little tricks yeah you know I come, coming from a software development background i think there's a lot of and and i think people really misunderstand what software developers are all about it's actually an incredibly creative process the other thing is is that 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 whole tell the rubber ducky is one of the reasons is a lot of devs don't document their code mm -hmm. and what they say is my code is the documentation which i think is a bs remark but anyway <laughs> Right? My code is so well written that you can just follow right along. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> not always the case, right? Um, but there's inherently a lot of parallels between software development and writing, as weird as that sounds. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. One other quick tip is in, again, in software developers, there is a notion of pair programming where you actually work on code in real time with another software developer so you can bounce ideas around, you know, gut check yourself, get a sense. Because, you know, when you're doing these kinds of things like writing, for example, like if you're on a tear, you feel like Ernest Hemingway and you, yeah. you hey, man, that's a beautiful blog post I just wrote. And someone else may look at it and go, what are you talking about here, 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 here? <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. um, well, Chad and, and Matt, you both know. I mean, Susan Chilton is is uh, is a famous editor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. absolutely destroying people's sense of self. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. In a good way, though. In a good In way. A good way. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, no. yeah. Sorry. Just one other point on that is, don't don't have an ego about your writing. I think that's a very dangerous thing to have is let people machete it and let people question um, what it is that your writing is trying to convey. It, it'll it only make your writing that much stronger. For sure. Oh, yeah. It's it's hard to improve if you let your ego get in the way. You have to kind of have a bit of a thick skin and be able to, I don't know, generally when I write something, as soon as I write it and I put it on paper, it's like its own thing. It's not me. It's not mine. It's its own thing. And if, if somebody tears it apart, I, it, I find that interesting. It's like, oh, hmm. And then I can take what they've done kind of learn from that and iterate and, and improve if nobody does that. And I, I got that a lot when I was younger. People would read my writing and be like, oh, that's amazing. And I would just get that 10,000 times and I'm just like, oh, okay, so that's not helping I don't need to improve. Yeah, I'm perfect. I'm, I've done it. I have yeah. all things in life, right? Back to yeah. Bed. yeah, for sure. And 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 it's uh, it, it is important not to get too married to that concept. Um, for sure. I would also suggest that all of your marketing should be put on a chopping block, sliced and diced, drawn and quartered. Maybe not the best analogy there, but <laughs> you want to be very critical 
Um, yeah. And if you're critiquing, also be constructive. Like to Chad's point, great, good. Like that's not that helpful. Like you should try to constructively critique. What are you trying to say here? What's the point? I don't understand. You lost me, mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. you're going down another rabbit hole or, you know, whatever the feedback is. Or if you're, you've already explained this. A lot of times people will double explain things within their copy too, right? Um, just because mm -hmm. they're, they're trying so hard to get that message across that, you know, maybe one or two sentences down. It's like, okay, well, you've already said this in a different way up here. So let's cut the fat a little bit, cut the fluff and uh, rearrange things, right? Sure. We were, uh, we've got a few minutes left. Chad, you got one or two uh, more little bits of... Uh... Hmm. There's yeah, so much to unpack in this one. There's one that was on the screen that I actually really like a lot. Number 23, your customers don't care about you, your products, or your services. They care about themselves. Yeah. And that's kind of a, that's a good point, and it will kind of help you focus your writing and focus uh, like where you want to uh, like kind of direct your message. You're, you're not, you don't want to be like, hey, look at me. I'm so awesome. Come yeah. buy my stuff, because then everyone's just going to be like, shut up, go away. You're, exactly. you're annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but if, yeah. You, if you present something that they can connect with that they might be interested in then you're you're basically like you got to look at your audience and you have to find what they're interested in what they like and then mm -hmm. pull from that and build your message off of what they want not what you want yep. and i think that's where steve Jobs' genius came through is uh this is probably exactly what steve jobs did right he doesn't customers yeah they care about the products but they care more about themselves right so the ipod example that you gave previously dan right yeah uh, there's a couple thousand songs in your pocket People love it, right? That's what was, people want. Yeah, it yeah, would touch on something I, sentimental to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, beyond the ease of use, relatively at the time, because it was always like you had to figure out how to transfer your music and everything. But I do feel that a big part of the iPod's success was that campaign, that that really drove it. You know, um, and you had Barack Obama sharing the playlist of his life and connecting mm -hmm. with people. Yeah. I will say I do like this one from Thomas Jefferson. Uh, and I, I think this one, especially in today's day and age with COVID, this really stands out quite a bit. The, but uh, the man who stops advertising to save money is like the man who stops the clock to save time. Yeah, I like that one too. And that's the that's the analogy that we use a lot of time at Honeypot is when people do either want to put a halt on something or they, they think that they only need marketing at particular times of the year. It's like, mm -hmm. no, that's not the reality. You always need marketing and you need to keep it rolling, right? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think that's an important point. I, I would also suggest that since we're talking about content and copywriting, your content and copywriting is exactly the same thing. Yeah. Those moments that occur black friday christmas easter whatever right those are seminal moments that we know people trigger people into into shopping but if you're stopping and just trying to start and stop and start and stop and start and stop your content creation or your marketing or your advertising it takes a lot it's it's like basic science right inertia you it takes more energy if something is at a standstill to get it moving up to a certain speed, then continually going at a consistent pace. Yeah. Right. Um, it's also, it's kind of, uh, it's the, uh, there's a herd mentality for investing is the same way. Everybody inherently knows that you're supposed to buy low and sell high. But what a lot of people do is buy high and sell low. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. They do it at the wrong times. Like when people were buying Bitcoin at $20,000, it's like, what are you doing? You should be buying it. Yeah, you should be. Yeah, it's just like that strategy. Instead of buying 20 grand worth of Bitcoin all at once, it's like people, the people who've been doing it for a long time have been putting maybe a hundred bucks a month or allocating some part of their monthly salary towards purchasing this Bitcoin so that they're yeah. always growing their portfolio of, uh, of crypto, right? Exactly. Um, and just to, to, to circle this back into writing, um, I think one of the things that's a challenge for anybody that writes is being overly ambitious and setting lofty goals, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're a smaller business or maybe you're independent or, you know, you've got several roles in your job description, which pretty much everybody in the world has. Um, you know, to say I'm going to crank out a blog post today. That is highly aggressive. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. Um, so another thing in terms of tips for copywriting is be consistent, build up libraries, build up recurring themes that you can go back to um, and, and to kind of continue to, to go to that well. For sure. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Well, we've got one minute left. Did we we didn't get to everything. We didn't even get to our examples. Yeah, we have uh, <laughs> this, we have quite oh, wow. a bit of examples in here. This is a scroller for sure. Okay, let's see. Let's do a scroller, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about um, some of these examples of creative writing that that were effective. You can just uh, I don't know if you've got those ready there, Matt. Yeah. So we can do this one that we found from Facebook, I believe. Let me see here. Yep. So this is the Delta Faucet example. Um, so Delta Faucet, um, this is, a, I think, a post that they put out in January. So mm -hmm. um, it's a, a little bit of a longer form content in terms of a little bit of the copy and the creative. But um, I, we feel like it, it did a really great job in, in uh, conveying uh, the overall message, getting people to read it, understanding um, how the images correlate to the message as well, right? Well, it's also, I mean, the, the nice thing is here is one, it's timely. So it's obviously it was in January there. Yeah. Um, so it creates, you know, it's cold outside. Um, you create a bit of a personalized approach with that. And it's also timely. Yep. Um, and this, the nice thing about the visual that goes along with the copywriting in there is saving you from making a purchase mistake that could be frustrating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, unless you're a plumber in the industry, I think, you know, I always forget about this um, is, you know, the single hole, the three hole or the vessel sink. Like these are things that um, I've actually purchased incorrectly in the past and it can be frustrating. Yep. So for sure. Um, so, yeah. So very direct and to the point. That's a nice one. Okay. We have uh, this one here. Uh, this one is from uh, an IG Wealth. Um, so it's just uh, it's a, a quick, dirty uh, webinar, right? Uh, it's, it gives you a sense of urgency by saying within the ad that there's a limited amount of seats uh, that's going on. Um, they're giving you a sense of worth, so saying that it's a it's a free webinar that you can attend, mm -hmm. um, helping people. So they include the word help. That's a huge um, convey of uh, of trust uh, through customers too, right? You're wanting to help people, not sell people, right? Well, the other thing too is that it's I think it's it's um it's realistic, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, in terms of what can you actually do for me in a, in a, in a one hour webinar, um, it, it definitely hits those marks. And again, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be, I use Ernest Hemingway as an example. His mm -hmm. writing style was incredibly simple. If you've ever yep. read Ernest Hemingway. Yep. Um, so simple doesn't mean not strategic, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Using things like, recency where you know seats are going to fill up using clarity to be very simple and to the point can be very effective strategies yep. to go with yep absolutely cool and then i think yeah we do have one uh for i think it's this one's for a local company uh Honeypot Market. Yeah, Honeypot Market. <laughs> you, could feature them. Dad, you could feature I have them. a few. There's so many here. Let me let me feature this one. This you one can... Stacy put in. This is from Honeypot. Um, this is a bit of a oh, long form content. Yeah, it's the dad joke one. The dad right? joke one is good. I'm trying to load in here. Uh, it won't let me scroll in. Oh, no. It's okay. But yeah, anyways, uh, do you guys, uh, Chad, do you want to explain this one? Yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of a fun little thing. It was Father's Day. Uh, you know, everyone loves good bad dad jokes so it was just kind of a fun way to to kind of open it up and then yep. just the rest of the message is is pretty straightforward and simple and then and then also um tagging in all of the other companies brings in all of that extra um of audience like it brings in their audience and it, it allows just a, a much further reach that way well look sure. you know absolutely and and um i can uh, if if you are looking for dad jokes uh, we will reveal our source. Uh, there's I can has that joke. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say you for a second. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> you're our source of the dad jokes. <laughs> Listen, I I connected uh, I can has dad jokes to our, our Slack channel, so you have oh. full access to probably thousands and thousands and thousands of awesome dad jokes. Yeah, there you go. I don't make them up. I do look them up. Mm, okay. There's, there's nothing better than getting a grown out of my kids. Yeah. Right? <laughs> For sure. So like this morning, I was wondering where the sun was, but then it dawned on me. 
Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, buddy. Nice. Um, so just one thing about that in terms of negative and positive sentiment. The one last takeaway um, is, I think, uh, is is um, humor always works. People yeah. like to laugh. Um, yeah. Great example of that is Wendy's um, Twitter account is absolutely genius for what they do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think you can uh, you can do that. Just one thing, um, Matt. I, I just popped our. We're gonna we're gonna lift the veil off a little bit of the new site. <laughs> Love it. Let's do it. Just taken. It's like my. It's like a thing. So here we go. So one of the things that we've learned, and, and this is actually I've tested this over the years, our main headline on our page is this traffic leads conversions. Simple as that, mm -hmm. right? That's actually been the most effective um, headline that we've had over the years. And we've A-B tested it on the actual site and with actual customers and everything else. Um, and you can see that as we go down, so this is the new site. Um, mm -hmm. done some magic with some kind of cool looking headlines here and still, still working some of the kinks out. Um, but you can see here, we've got some very, we're trying to be very direct and just very simple in terms of what it is we can offer you here. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the rest of the site, it's, um, it's really being put together as a knowledge base for digital marketing with lots of downloads and obviously our podcasts and our live streams and creating all of that content. And, yep. and, and this is, um, I think I've been spending a disproportionate amount of time kind of scalpeling this and changing it. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to start to pull other um, members of the team into it, but, but this is an example, I think, uh, where we're headed is, you know, it's the five W's. What do we do? We're just going to be simple. What are our clients saying? Right. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to it, there are hundreds of tools. There are hundreds of channels. There's tons of different ways to do it. At the end of the day, it comes down to three things. It's quality traffic, generating leads, getting those leads to convert into customers. And that's it. That's what yep. digital marketing is really all about. Mm -hmm. For sure. Cool. All righty. Well, that was a nicely organized little session. Five oh six. Yeah. We're doing pretty good. Really good. Uh, what do you What do you guys have on the go this weekend? Anything exciting? Um, I'm going to be going up to Topamori and building a bunkie this weekend. So, oh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I might do a little. It's like a yurt is a bunkie like a yurt? Yeah, a bunkie is like a little bit bigger than a shed, but big enough that you can fit up fit like a bunk bed in it and uh, some other stuff. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do you have like is, is there a reason you're building it in Tobermory? I'm just uh, of... well, we have a cottage there, right? Wow. So we instead of putting an addition on the cottage, it's like you can buy a bunkie from Europe and like you have to assemble it like IKEA furniture, and it can be a big pain in the ass. But <laughs> it's like a tiny home. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to fix my lawn tractor again. I think I got it down to one last thing we need to do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Get it fully functional. I'm gonna try to mow my entire lawn this weekend. Hey, there you go. Right on. So it must be beautiful to weather too, right? So have a beer in your hand yeah. while you do it, guys. There you go. Get inside. Some fresh yeah. air. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna do a little sure. remote jam session with a friend of mine. Maybe we'll see. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Right That's on. a good way to do it. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning into episode 140 of Live at the Hive. We will see you next week for episode 141. All right. See you guys. Peace and carrots. <laughs>